Okay, this is going to be an overview of the SOLIDWORKS Professional Certification Practice Test. Um, we're going to be making this purple block. And um, first, let's discuss what the best course of action for actually making this part is. I'm going to start with the base right here. Um, it's going to be in this view. And then I'm going to make um, this pop out with the hole and then these ribs and then this cut out and then these um, these pipes and you'll see in a bit why I do that in the specific order so first let's start um, and make this base so I'm going to start with a rectangle doesn't really matter what size but first important thing is to use global variables. So to do that, you're going to type in equals, then quotes around a letter. Um, right now that's going to be A, because that is what the question gives me in terms of um, variables. So then it's, when I first create this variable, it's going to pop up as this little globe with an asterisk by it. I'm going to click that. And that'll bring me to what I want A to be. And I want A to be 213. So, um, now that I have that, I'm just going to make sure I input all of the variables that the question gives me. So, the next one is B, and that's equal to 200. And then C, and then 70. D is 130, and E is oops, 21, and I also have to make sure I type in X and Y, because those will also be important, oops, and that's equal to A, so you've got, you've got to make sure you put the quotes around the A there, divided by 3, and then y is b divided by 3 plus 10. Okay, now that we've got all that done, we can make this length dimension as b. So I'm going to just type in equals quotes around the b, and that'll update to 200. Now you, you want to make sure when you type in your variables, they show up with this red, this red sigma in front of them. If not, you probably didn't use quotes or something else went wrong, so just go back and redo that. Because um, if you don't, when you try to dimension those later, they will not update. SolidWorks will not treat them as um, a, an actual global variable. It'll just be a one-time value. So let's go, and I know this base has rounded corners, and they have a radius of 10, so I'm going to use this sketch fillet tool, and I'm going to click each corner, and the preset is already 10 millimeters, so I don't need to worry about that. Got to click once, it'll update those fillets, and there we go, I'm out of the tool. Now I'm going to extrude this to a height of 25 millimeters. And then, the next thing I'm going to do is this uh, pop-out. So I'm going to create a new sketch, a uh, useful uh, keyboard shortcut for uh, getting to the view cube. Instead of going up here to click this button, you can just click the space bar. So I'm just going to do that. Um, and I'm just going to create two line segments down here. And then I'll dimension them from the edge, both as 60. And then I'm going to make a sketch fillet. This radius is not 10. In this view, it shows the radius is 15. So we got to make sure we update that. And 
then I'm going to extrude this again. It's going to, SolidWorks is going to come up with this question. Do I want to close sketch with model edges? And you can see by this yellow arrow, it's pointing towards the inside of what I want to extrude. So I'm going to say yes, and then it should come up as a ex extrudable feature or extrudable surface. Now, um, I know the height of this is 35, of the pop-out and the base, and just the base is 25, so I know in total the pop-out is only going to be 10 millimeters tall. Um, and now I'm going to make this hole. So I'm going to come up here to Hole Wizard, and I'm going to go down to the question and look at the presets and give me. So I know it's going to be asymmetric, and the default for that hole is already the hex bolt, the ANSI, blah blah blah. Um, so we're good on that, and um, I already made this part before, so the preset is going to be M8. Make sure the fit is closed. Um, most of the time, SolidWorks will come up with this near side countersink, which will give you um, some special features you can use with the, the hole, but I don't want that because that's not part of this um, F variable. So, um, and if you don't see this, these presets here, you can just click on close or show custom sizing underneath fit, and it's just going to be in the same order as what the question gives me. So, 15, 30, and 10. Um, and I also need to make sure I put this hole where I want it. So I'm going to click on this face and just put it wherever I want. And then come back and dimension this as 30 for millimeters from each edge. And I should just be able to click OK. And there we go. There's my hole. Now I'm going to make a new sketch and make these, this ribbing right here. So, <coughs> going off of this sketch right here, uh, let's get in a better view orientation. Uh, I'm just gonna sketch out um, this this feature. So, I know that this line is equal to C away from that edge. Same thing with this edge. Equal to C. I also know these are 80 millimeters long. And P there as well. Now I could have done an equal length relation there, but it was less time to just dimension it. So I'm going to make this arc um, and it won't show up as fully constrained. Um, it'll still be in blue because this center point is going to be able to move, and I don't want that. So let's add this relation. Oops, let's get rid of that point, I think. Nope. Oh, it was the arc. There we go. should be fully constrained. There we go. Now I'm going to use this tool. It's called Offset Entities. And pretty useful if you don't want to have to go back and trace everything if it's just a little bit away from wherever you, your original lines are. So, um, I know the width of this is 15. The preset is 10, but I need to go back and 15 and then I can just click on the side I want it. You see this little arrow here? Um, I want it on the inside of this line, the bottom right, so I'm going to click there. And there we go. Now I'm going to extrude this and sometimes with new features 
um, SolidWorks will automatically um, turn on thin, the thin feature feature. Um, but I don't want that. I want this line. So I'm going to go down to select the contours, click on that, come up with this blue box, and then I can click on where I want the ribs to be, which is inside these two line segments. And then once I do that, once I select a contour, a region, I can unclick the feature, which will make sure the only thing I'm extruding is actually what I want to extrude. Now I know the height of this extrusion is going to be 95 millimeters from the, the base. The base is already 25 millimeters tall and we're extruding off of the, the base, not from the very bottom. So we know that this has to be 70 millimeters tall. Now the next thing I'm going to do is create this cutout right here. And I'm going to use that same tool. I'm going to start a new sketch on this face. I'm going to use the same tool, Offset Entities. And I'm going to click all the lines I want for this cutout. And I'm going to make sure the width is 9 millimeters, And it should be good. Now I'm going to go back and use this Sketch Fillet tool again to round these corners which have a radius of 10 millimeters. Um, it's set to 15, so let's change it back to 10. And there we go. Now we can um, extrude cut this. Um, it's going to cut too far because it remembers I just extruded this ribbing 70 millimeters. So I know after I make this cut, I want this bottom layer to be um, 5 millimeters in height. So I can either just do the simple math of 25 minus 5, but for practice, let's do offset from surface, um, which is good if um, you know your extrusion height may be changing with one of the variables. And I want that to be offset from that surface by 5 millimeters, which is that, that height right there. Um, doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but just for practice, you want to um, use as many different variety varieties as possible. As possible, excuse me. Um, okay, now let's make these um, these pipes, these hollow cylinders. First, I'm going to. Um, make this left one and to save myself the, the time from having to constrain this this uh, circle 7.5 millimeters away from this line I can just hover over the top of this rib and it'll give me this center point which I can click on and then I know that circle will be constrained to that uh, regardless of what uh, you know, global variables I change. So I know the the uh, diameter of this left one is equal to x. And I can extrude this um, I need to make sure I, I include this overhang uh, 10 millimeters. So for the first direction let's type in 10. And then let's click on direction 2 and make the distance equal to D, except for D, um, we're, we're starting from this, this plane, so we need to make sure that, that this length from the, the, where I started the sketch to the end, the, the other end of the, uh, the pipe is D minus 10. And there's, um, just make sure you put a space in between the minus and the 10. If not, uh, SOLIDWORKS will read that as T minus 1, and you do not want that. So let's click OK. That, that looks, looks pretty good. And let's do that on the other side. I can't really 
patternless because the radiuses are different, but I'm sure you can figure it out somehow. This is just the way I'm doing it. So this is Y, and I'm going to extrude that in the same way, 10 millimeters one way, and then D minus 10 to the space in the other way. And I did it this way because um, I wanted to cut through with the hole both the rib and the cylinder. Um, so that I wouldn't do the rib last or something and then have extra material in the hole. That would not be fun. Um, so far, there is not a way I've, I have figured out to use dimensions in the hole wizard. So right now, it's gonna, just going to be easier and probably just as fast to just extrude cut it because it's not that complicated of a dimension or a hole. Um, and the radius of that is E. And we're just going to um, go to features, extruded cut, and make sure um, we can use this drop down menu to um, select any one of these. You can do through all, which will give you all the way to the end of the base. Um, or you could just do up to next, which is just going to look nicer. Doesn't really matter. But moving on, let's make this second hole. If and I don't want to come back and have to add relations, so I'm making sure I have the center point of the circle and the center point of what I already made. If that's not showing up, what I just did is hovered over the edge of the feature and then usually the um, you know these points around here will show up. Click on the center point, dimension this as E. No. E not D. There we go. And we're gonna extrude cut that as well. And then we're gonna do to next as well. Now what you might see here but not understand fully um, what looks like two concentric circles. Um, it's a little hard to see in the detail, but this is actually a chamfer. It is not a fillet, so it's not um, it's not curved. Um, so what this means down here is there are four of them, um, one on each side of the pipes. Um, there is a radius of 45 degrees and the chamfer is offset from the cut by 2 millimeters so its radius is 2 millimeters uh, larger than this edge right here so the chamfer feature is under the fillet button so the fillet, the drop down menu and the chamfer now I could individually select these edges but SOLIDWORKS will recognize if you just click the whole hole, the whole hole, and uh, um, it'll do both edges for you. And since I did this part already, it already has this presets, uh, the presets of two millimeters um, away from the original edge and 45 degrees. Um, so. This is the end of question one. Let's make sure we, before we go, we go any farther, apply the material. The material is alloy steel. Let's uh, apply that and then close the window. And we should. There we go. The answer, although it is really hard to see, um, is what we got here: one thousand or 14,207.34 grams uh, spot on. So um, question two and three from here should not be that much more difficult. Uh, what we can do is right click on equations, hit manage equations, and go back and change these values. For, so for question two, A is 2.5, B is 2.10, C 
is 176, 137, and 39. And X and Y don't change. So once that updates, we can go back right back to mass properties. And we should get 16,490.4. We're a little off. I'm not sure this answer is completely correct because every time I've done this, I've got 0.48. But we are definitely in the one, the the limit of the one percent tolerance. So let's move on again. I would suggest um, in between um, questions, making sure you save each ind individual part or each ind individual version as um, a new file just so that if you realize you messed something up, um, you can go back and, and change that. Um, so I'm not going to say it just because that's going to take a lot of time, um, but we can move on to question three, which is just changing the parameters again. Um, Okay, now um, let's go back to mass properties and we got 15,100.46 grams, 0.1 off. Um, from the answer, so uh, I think SolidWorks usually maybe it's just I designed it a little bit off, but SolidWorks usually gives a plus or minus 0 0.01 gram error in what I found, so it doesn't matter if we're completely spot on. Okay, now let's move on to 4 and 5. Um, as you can see here, we get rid of this cut out with the hole, or this pop out with the hole. And then we also add a new cut out on the back behind the two pipes. And we also um, add a, uh, a cut to the, the this left pipe right here. So um, <coughs> to save time and to save some error messages that I don't want, I'm just going to suppress this feature. Um, and since this cutout is dependent on this feature, that's going to be suppressed as well. But that is fine because we have to redo um, this cutout anyway since it has a new, a new, um, a new shape. So um, if I don't want these pipes in the way, I can um, use this section view, which did not work very well. Um, I can click the top plane um, and drag this up, say about there. Doesn't really matter as long as I don't get the cylinders in my way. Um, so let's make, using offset entities, let's make this new cutout. So carefully click these lines, make sure it's only the line. Highlighted. I'm not going to click this arc because it's easier for me to just drag these lines into place and then use the sketch fill up with the corners than to have to uh, fiddle with that dimension. So the radius for this cutout is um, of the um, of the uh, corners is 9, um, and I'm not sure I did, I changed the parameter to, uh, oops, let's check, I'm not sure, oh, I did, cool, so that is correct, now I'm going to go back and cut that out, and just say time, I'm just going to do 20, because I know this isn't changing, and let's do the same thing or a similar thing on the other side. 
it's harder to use the offset entities because there's there's no complete um, thing here. Um, what I can do is just use the offset for the arc. Um, that, oops, wrong direction. Just makes my life a little easier. So make sure we reverse that, and then I can just make a rough sketch <coughs> off of this arc. And I won't have to do too much after this. Just need to make sure I mention both of these lines. Oops, both of these lines as nine millimeters away from the edge, and then I can sketch fill at these corners. It's radius of 10 again. And there we go. Let's extrude. No, whoops, my button. Let's extrude cut that. Um, let's just check that's correct. Yep. And um, now we can turn on off cross sectional view um, or section view. Um, because now we need to go back and look at these cylinders. So I need to make um, this cutout, you see right here on this, this pipe. So what I'm going to do is go to reference geometry, make a new plane, click on this surface, um, the, the edge, the, front face of this cylinder and I want it to have an offset of 30 degrees which is where we're going to start our cut and then I want to flip the offset so it's on the right side so now I can go back to this plane start a new sketch on it uh, <coughs> and we can um, make this cut. So I'm going to find the center point of whichever circle, doesn't matter. Same thing. And I'm just going to make sure I have a new circle in this plane. And uh, I want the, um, the this radius to be equal to um, I think X, right? X. And then um, I'm going to make another circle, um, which is going to be the, the point at which we stop our cut. Oops. I'm going to mention this as, um, where is it? Oh, here it is. It's up here. Um, the distance in between this outer circle and this inner circle we're making, we're making right now, is 10 millimeters. Let's put that. And um, if I cut this right now, I would also cut the rib down here, which I do not want to do, because that is not what the the view shows shows me. So, like right there. So I want to go back to this sketch and just uh, make sure I leave the rib intact. So I'm just going to make two lines um, and then trim off, use the trim entities um, and trim that. Overdefined. Uh oh. Okay, let's uh, delete that. It should stay fully constrained. Uh, there we go. So now our sketch, this hole or this cutout we're trying to do, is only going to include um, everything but the rib. So now let's go and cut that, that out. Um, we know that. And distance of 30. There we go. And there's my cutout. And now just to make this look cleaner, I'm just going to hide the visibility on this plane. 
doesn't really matter, but, um, and I need to make sure I update my parameters, which I have not yet, so let me do that real quick. Oops. here is that uh, y actually changes too, so it's been constant this whole time, but now we're changing it to plus 15 instead of plus 10, so just keep a lookout for things that might not change um, in the first couple questions, but could change later. So the mass that we're looking for is... Um, Let's zoom in, see if that helps. Hold on. Okay, we are a bit off. I am going to go back and check my measurements. And the right answer is 13,206.4. I got about 3 grams off. It's in the tolerance, but let me go check on my work. Okay, I found my mistake. Uh, it is, I wasn't paying attention, so I can always learn, but uh, the radius on this chamfer actually changed from 45 degrees to 30 degrees. Um, so let's change that right now to 30 degrees. And hopefully that gives us the right mass. So we are um, about 0 0.04 grams off from the exact answer. I'm going to call that good since that is pretty close. Um, let's move on to question five. We're just changing the parameters. They're global variables, so it should be pretty easy. Um, let me do that. Let's go back, and we got 14,207.97, that is 0 0.03 grams off from the final answer. I'm going to call that good. There might be something a little bit off with my, um, my model, you could probably find it, but that is this end, the end of this uh, video. Hopefully you found it helpful. And, um, Good luck on the professional test.